okay. So we're gonna try to get this Cortex RC Tiny 90 together. And first of all, I've counted everything to make sure everything's there, everything's there. And so we're just gonna take everything out of the packaging. I got my little trusty mini power tool here. So I'm gonna sit that right there. First off, the first thing we're gonna do here, these things here, we're gonna connect these to the ducts here. There we go. Okay, there we go. Make sure they are in tight. So we got one. Done. Okay, now, so before we attach all of them together, right now, I'm just at this point where I have two of the ducts here. Now, I noticed inside here on the carbon fiber, the holes on the carbon fiber rings aren't cut that clean. So we got some splintering there together. Okay, so I had to break out the hand screwdriver to get this thing in here correctly. So now we got this part done. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add these parts here. To deal with it. Okay, so your prop guards should look like this when done. Okay, so now that that's done, we're gonna take out the frame here. And we're gonna mount the motors onto the frame next. Got the frame here. Okay, so I got all of the motors mounted onto the frame. I only used two screws as you can see and I did use the same silver screws that I was using to put together the uh, rings there so and reason being those black screws I think they're for something else because they're way too long to go in there they'll go up into the motor so don't use these okay next we're gonna build the camera mount here so we're gonna take this out of the packaging real quick so we have these pieces here. I think these are landing feet or something. I don't know what the heck those little parts are, but I think these are the main parts of the camera mount here. We're gonna start with these two here and we're gonna mount these here onto it. We're gonna mount them right here my daughter's in the background, jacking up all my stuff. <laughs> She's dropping screws and parts, everything. She's just messing it all the way up. Now the other one down the bottom here. This one is gonna be right here. goes in that little hole there okay so I got both sides on we want the flat edge with the screw holes facing this part facing this way so you can see I have it in let me see if I can get it to focus bottom The bottom screw is there. As you can see. So now we're going to put this carbon fiber X right here. On the flat. Why these edges have to be flat facing this way. So let's grab two of the same screws. Drop those in.
not going to screw them in all the way. Just a little bit. Get the two diagonal ones first. Is it going? Oops, I was going the wrong direction. <laughs> so there. That makes the rest of them line up when you go diagonal with the first two. So let's get this one. And this one, last. You can actually tighten them all the way in now. Once you get the first two in, you can tighten the rest of them in. Flush. Because they're already lined up. So there. We finished that part there. Okay, so this little part here, we're just going to mount that on the bottom here. The two edges go inside these little grooves here on the bottom of the carbon fiber. So we're going to have to snap this one in here. Hopefully it just snap in, but we might have to loosen this one here. I think that's what I'm going to do actually. Just loosen that and then tighten it up on it. There we go. Make sure this one's tightened too. So there we go. It's nice and tight on there. Okay, check this out guys. So this is where the battery strap goes inside this little slit here. And look, it's not going to be able to fit. You're going to have to cut this battery strap down. So... I would say you can go straight down the middle. Okay, so I cut the strap down. It should be able to fit now. Let's see if I can get it to fit. This is the front here. The part with these two holes here is the front. So try to remember that. This is the rear. And we're going to take the sticky side down. At this time, I'm thinking we might as well mount the camera onto this thing here. So we're going to use this one here, the sticky tape. And what we're going to do, let's remove the lens cap real quick. And what we're going to do is remove one side and we're going to stick it on the camera this way so flush against the camera as we can that way and hmm, I'm thinking I can probably save some of this stuff just do one side just use one piece let's see That'll work. Me and my bright ideas, right? So we're going to split this down the middle. And then we're going to put it on this side of the cam. And we're going to put it on the other side of the cam. So both sides like that. Make sure it's on there good. And that's what's going to hold the camera to this here. We're going to mount it like this here. So let's do that now, actually. Might as well. There we go. Just press on it a little. And that should hold the camera on there. Seems pretty good. So the camera's affixed to this thing here. Okay, so it's time to add the power lead, but I don't think I'm going to use this power lead, even though it's nice and silicone. 
we're going to use this one just because I like the piece here to pull them apart okay so I tend the wires up a little and so now we're going to add some solder to the ESC board the 4-in-1 ESC's so these two pads here okay so I got all of the pads soldered up I got the power lead on so now let's go about getting this on the frame and mounting this on top the flight controller socket here matches up with this socket here well that plug matches up with this socket there push it straight through there okay so we got our four and one ESC's and the flight controller stacked like this so far and we got the shortest standoffs in the middle there and then we got some talk we got the taller ones on top and there's some more with a shorter screw thread we're gonna save those for the bottom of these but before we put these on we're gonna first put some washers on here so we gotta add some nuts on here otherwise those standoffs won't screw all the way closed Okay, y'all, so I removed the flight controller off the top of the stack here. I had to put washers in between here. As you can see, there's a washer there. There's another one down here. And then there's one on the outside. And that's to take up some of the slack of the thread because the thread was going to be too long. So that's why they include all those washers. And they only include just enough for you to make the build. So don't lose any. I lost one of them and I was looking for it for over two hours <laughs> they're, they're very tiny and so I'm gonna solder the motor wires to the ESC's so this is the front here this is motor one motor number two motor three and motor four now on the ESC's the 4-in-1 ESC pad this is motor two here so this is motor one, motor two, motor three, motor four. So these, these first three pads here are motor one. These three pads here, motor two, three pads on this side, motor three, and motor four over here on these three pads. So what I plan to do is run these motor wires up under here and back out here and around here to the pads and with this one here I'm going to take it down under here out the side here and onto the pads and then this one here I'm going to take it around this side and back out and under here and I already said what I was going to do to that one <laughs> so uh, we're going to just be going under and over to try to uh, use up some of the slack of the motor wire without cutting it so let's see if we can get this done okay so let's start by turning these wires a little hopefully you guys can see this got that one if I could get this one check and see if it's clean looks a little sloppy to me but it's not touching the other one Oop. and it definitely was sloppy here we go, that should be a better one. Got one 
whole wire. See, we gotta bend this one all the way around this side. Got that one. Let's look at it. Looks a little, little sloppy. <laughs> nope, I messed it up. I need some more solder on the pad now, it looks like. There we go. Okay, we got that one. Go, we got that one. Whew. So good enough. Soldering iron's not looking too great. That one on. Spin it around real quick. Let me get it with my hand. go so it looks like we got them all this is the front here the power lead actually comes out the front and we're going to stick it down in here now we can mount the flight controller back on top Let's see hopefully everything fits okay this is going to have to stay close to this side here Flight controller here. Pull these to the side there. go now the good thing about this is I like to use DSM X satellites and the satellite receivers have a spot right here on this board so that's awesome just plug and play right there so I'm looking to see where the heck is the buzzer pad I think a buzzer is a must-have so let's see if we can locate the buzzer Okay, there it is. The buzzer pad there. Get something to point with. That's the buzzer pad right there. And that's the five volts. So these two pads here. Okay, so I got the receiver on now. I extended the wire, got a longer wire on it. And so I got it laying across the top there. And the camera mount here it's just gonna go right over top like this but first I have to solder a, a part for the camera onto the board I soldered the power lead for the VTX right here this is the ground and the second one is a 5 volt 5 volt out so that's where that's it's going to plug on to this and there's a hole in the middle so that stuff can come up through here just going to feed the antenna of the receiver right up through there and we're going to screw it on like this and then we're going to next the last thing to do is hook it up to beta flight 
or clean flight whichever I'm gonna try to flash beta flight on it if it's not already on here and then we're gonna see which way the motors are spinning hopefully we don't get any magic smoke so I added the ducted fan design piece there it just took five screws on the bottom here so it just fastens here here there and here and right on the edges right there so that's all it took to get this uh, hoop design on it the prop guards so it can be removed but it's I think it's going to be pretty hard to remove without disassembling the stack there so um, you will have a little work cut out for you because um, the stack really doesn't fit between so um, I I had to uh, put this part on before I put the camera mount on so you have to at least remove the camera mount before you remove this if you're gonna do that and oh I added this here uh, they came it came with little rubber grips for the battery so the battery won't slip it did come with velcro straps too but I just put a piece of velcro on the battery and this well it came with velcro patches and I figured I won't use those I'll use this because the velcro strap here should be able to grab onto the patch that's on the battery and this other side here the other side of the battery can be up against this and it won't slip because of the grip there so yeah I think this thing looks pretty nice I like the way it looks it does seem a little I did do a hover test indoors and this thing is super loud so I don't think that I'll be flying this thing indoors I really don't think this is an indoor craft <laughs> this is strictly for outdoors um, in my opinion because of how loud it is I did try to use some different props some three bladed props but it caused it to vibrate very bad and it was interfering with the flight controllers um, ability to work correctly it was um starting to lean and do crazy things it flipped over one time so I just put the normal props back on it <laughs> so maybe those props weren't balanced um, I was using these props here I ordered them from Amazon I forget the name of these props I will have links in the description if you do want to get these though but they seem to be unbalanced so um, won't be using those I'll try some other props later though we got a finished product here so what I um, ended up doing is um, using some glue on the bottom of the nuts here I use some glue on the bottom of the washers there to keep it tight on the bottom so I can fasten the top so now it's pretty sturdy here and I can say that this thing feels very sturdy it's very tough and rigid the frame is and I noticed that the ducted fan design these uh, hoops here are taller than the Aurora 90 which I thought was this competitor was the competitor to this um, it so this seems like it will be uh, a little more better with crashes than that so um, we'll see <laughs> um, once I uh, fly it and all if I have a crash well of, sh of course I'm gonna have a crash um, <laughs> that always happens but um, so the whole thing is built now everything seems to be intact the frame there's really no warps or anything like that everything spins freely all of the props and all everything works so we're gonna go check this thing out oh I have to tell you guys I switched the, the receiver here I went with a normal satellite well the one that I'm used to using I have a link in the description to this It's by from you smile on um, Amazon so they've been working really well for me the other one the red one that I had I think it's just a PPM receiver because I couldn't get that to work like the satellites work so um, I went with the one that I was used to and um, 
yeah, that's just about it.